Good morning. Ain't God been good to you? Yes, he has. I know it's cold outside, but we thank God for the heat in this building. Amen. somebody the old I need thee every hour I need thee come on somebody oh bless me now my Savior God come to thee. Come on, somebody, help me say it one more time. I need the oh, I need thee every eye. I need thee. Come on, come on, come on, somebody.
I know he's been good to somebody in here. When you saw that you had no way out, the only person you could lean and depend on was God. So somebody just tell God, thank you. Tell God, thank you. Let's go to God in prayer. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this awesome service where your Holy Ghost is present and is filling this place. Lord, hide me behind the cross so that only you may be seen and that only you may be glorified so that somebody might be saved. In Jesus' name we do pray, amen. If you have your Bibles, could you turn to Psalms 111? Psalms 111. This is in the Old Testament. Thank you, Pastor Futterberg, for this opportunity on this morning. Thank you, everybody, for being here on this morning. When you have it, we're going to start reading in verse 1. Could you say amen? Still here a few pages turning. That's all right. Psalms 111. If you have it, say amen. amen. There you go. There you go. It reads, Hallelujah. I will praise the Lord with all my heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. Verse number two, the Lord's works are great, studied by all who delight in them. All that he does is splendid and majestic. His righteousness endures forever. He has caused his works, wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious in the Lord and compassionate. Uh, skip down to verse number nine. He has sent redemption to his people. He has ordained his covenant forever. His name is holy and all inspiring. Word of God for the people of God. Uh, message for this morning. When I think of the goodness of Jesus. Just tell somebody next to you, say, neighbor. Have you thought about the goodness of Jesus? I don't, I don't know why the Lord gave it to me, but he did. As we come to a close of another year, we've gone through many ups and many downs. Through these ups and downs, some of us might have come close to letting the routine of coming to church dwindle our praise down to almost nothing. But I'm here to remind you that your praise needs to increase as you think of the goodness of Jesus. I know that this year you might have wanted to give up. I know this year that you've sinned and you've fallen short of the glory of God. And you don't think you're worthy to praise God in church. Uh, you, you, you might have uh, thought your finances haven't been right. Children have acted up. You uh, have come close to calling it quits. You have bills that you could not pay. But it, it, it seemed like God wasn't answering any of your prayers. And I know that you had a lot of things going on this year. But here's the kicker. God has kept you. Tell your neighbor, God has kept you. And, and you're in your right mind. You're breathing on your own. You're walking on your own. You're talking on your own. God has kept you. This is why the psalm was written. It says, praise the Lord. I will thank you for all, with all my heart as I meet, meet with his godly people. Uh, praise is simply thanking God for what he's already done for you. And is there anybody in here that can praise God for what he's done for you? For the ways he's made. Uh, 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 for everything that he's done for you. He, he got shoes on your feet. You got clothes on your back. So I just tell God, thank you. I thank him for what he's done. And is there anybody in here that can give God an advanced praise in here? By clapping your hands and telling him, God, I thank you. I got eyes to see. I got arms to move. Fingers to move. Toes to move. It's my body and where I wanted to be, but it's still working. So just tell God, thank you. That's what the psalmist says. I got to praise God with everything that I have. Not only do you have to praise God with everything that you have, but you got to praise God around godly people. Now, 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 now. I told, uh, I preached in another sermon. You got 
three group of folks in church. Believers, those are your godly people, the ones that's gonna praise with you. Your unbelievers, those don't know no know Christ yet, but uh, you're trying to convince them. And you have your church folk. Now, 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 I've had people in church that tell me that I do too much when I praise. Not here, but somewhere else. And I've had people in church say, you got to calm down. But I can't calm down because when I think about the goodness of Jesus and what he's done for me, my soul gets happy. So don't let nobody tell you that you're praising too much, praising too hard, because they don't know, like you know, what the Lord has done for you. So when you get around godly people, something begins to happen. When you're around godly people, you're unified with the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost is able to move. Somebody just say, Holy Ghost, move in this place. These are your true worshipers that know God for themselves. When you, it's something when you know God, and you know what God has done for you. When you were going and sinning uh, 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 willingly, and God forgave you of that sin. When you've done things that you know ain't right, God still forgave you. That's why I praise him. And it's also a command that we do praise the Lord, but you got to know why you're praising the Lord. And have you ever been around folks in church that looked at you funny when you praised God? I want to submit to you this. Even in church, you have to give God your very best. My daddy told me that when I was 15 years old, he said, Either you're going to work at McDonald's or you're going to use your gift for the Lord. That's what he told me. Playing the piano. I got on that organ one Sunday and I got happy. And I began to praise the Lord for what he's done for me. The Holy Ghost took me over. Mr. Kenny, he, he remember, he was right there tearing me on. Uh, you got to praise God around godly people. Don't just watch me praise. But I want you to praise with me. I don't want you to watch me praise. But I need a praise partner. Tell your neighbor, are you going to be my praise partner today? Are you going to be my praise partner today? And also praising God releases things that had you down and feeling bad. Have you ever come in church? You said, I don't feel like coming this morning. Either it's raining or the cold, you had a bad week. But it's something about when you come in those doors. And when the choir starts singing, when they start singing in, in devotion, you get a little happy. And when you start praising the Lord with all you got, and, and, and the preacher starts to preach, and you just get happy, and you leave out better than you left in with, and, and you said, this week I'm going to have me a good week. Even though the devil going to uh, try to throw stuff at me, I'm going to praise God with everything that I have. Amen. Praising God also takes your mind off of the things of the world. I remember a service at uh, uh, my, church, my home church, Free Will, when we had when the younger adults were praying, uh, was singing that Sunday. Whole church got happy. Come on. Pastor said his mind was taken off the things that had him uh, down and out. Yeah. Yeah. Praise changes your situation. <laughs> Praise changes everything. So when you have, when you know who God is and you realize that something happens, yeah. you'll feel a little bit better. To thank God for what he's done. Not only must I praise God for what he's done, I must thank him for grace and mercy. Grace is God giving me what I don't deserve. None of us in here deserve to be alive right now. All of us deserve death and to be in hell. But mercy Said God said it is God withholding what you do deserve, but grace says I'm gonna give you what you don't deserve. So He gave us His Son Jesus during this season as we celebrate. Because mercy said, uh, 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 God said, on oh, mercy, I'm gonna withhold what you do deserve. You deserve to go to hell. Uh, we don't deserve to be here. We deserve all the stuff that's coming our way. But God said I'm gonna give you both of them. Keep it from what you what you don't deserve and. I'm gonna give. I don't. I'm gonna keep you from what you do deserve. I'm gonna give that to you. Grace and mercy. Just start. grace and mercy. And when I think back over my life, and where I should have been, the death I should have had, the hell I should have been in, then I realize that I can't sit here when I'm able to get up on my feet. I have to realize that I've got to give God all 
all of the praise and the worship and glory. And lastly, I need to praise God because in verse number nine, he said he has sent redemption to his people and he has ordained his covenant forever. His, holy, his name is holy and awe-inspiring. Meaning he has paid the full ransom for all of us that have accepted him. And is there anybody here that can say, I'm going to praise the Lord while I still have time? Uh, even though I don't feel like praising him, I'm going to give him the best that I have. Because he gave us his son named Jesus during this season, which was the greatest gift that he could give us. Because God realized that, I, that, that, that we cannot save ourselves. He said that I need somebody else. And his name was Jesus. He, he was Mary's baby. Mary was a virgin and, Jesus, and the angel came down and said, Mary, you're going to have a baby named Jesus. He is to be called Emmanuel, God with us. The baby would grow up to teach uh, the righteousness of God. The baby would work miracles. Uh, the baby will work signs. Uh, the baby will work wonders. Uh, and is there anybody in here uh, that can say the baby was betrayed uh, and the baby lived a perfect life? Uh, uh, but even though uh, he did a perfect life, uh, folks still went against what he did. Uh, but he kept pressing on. Uh, so today I want you to tell somebody I'm going to praise the Lord while I still have time. Uh, I'm going to praise him for what he's done for me. Is there anybody here that can say, I'm going to praise, praise the Lord. I've been down and out, but I'm still going to praise the Lord for Jesus. Is there anybody that can testify that I'm going to praise God when I don't feel like praising him? I'm going to praise God when it don't seem convenient for me. I'm going to praise God us. It shows unbelief us what God has done for me. And I want to tell you this. This baby grew up and he died for your sins. He died for my sins. And somebody help me here. And praise God because he died on a hill.
Jesus, the one I worship, Jesus, the one I praise, Jesus, 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 Jesus. yourself in. 